Hey guys, Tech Rally here, and welcome to the third lesson of Blockstack plus React. For this lesson, we're going to be building the foundation and installing the initial libraries to get this app up and running. The first utility that we want to focus on is utilizing the Create React app to start our project. The Create React app is, is a really useful repository that allows developers to develop in React very quickly and seamlessly. Let's look at the GitHub repo. In the GitHub repo, if you scroll down a little bit below, you can see many different ways that you can install and start a project. For me, I'm going to be starting it with the NPM, but you could also use Yarn or MPX. So I'm going to copy this right here. And with the copied uh, NPM script, I'm going to paste it here. But instead of calling it my app, I'm going to be calling it blog stacks tutorial. And I'm going to let this install for a bit and I'll get after creating my Blockstacks tutorial folder via Create React App, I'm going to CD into that specific folder. Going back to our slide, I want to install a couple of libraries that will make our development a little bit easier, as well as necessary libraries to uh, utilize the Blockstack library. So here, so in here, we could use npm install save lodash, blockstack at 19.0.0 alpha 2, node sass, react boma components next, uh, react router, and react scripts. I'm not going to go into detail too many of these, but specifically with at least with the blockstack, it is, it is using 19.0.0 alpha 2. So it's not the official blockstack version that they're currently using. But based on the discussions and the forums that are that I've read so far, it looks like this is kind of the direction that they want to go to. And on top of that, the React Bulma components is more of a UI library, kind of similar to Material UI and Bootstrap. We don't have to go into too much detail on how React Bulma components work, but if you're ever curious, there's some uh, documentation in the next slide as well. So I'm going to take that code right here and then in, in the iTerm itself, I'm going to copy and paste it here and then press enter. I'm going to let this uh, sit again to install and then I'll get back to you as soon as it's finished. Good seeing you again. Hopefully there weren't any issues installing the libraries. And now that all the libraries are installed, you can run the app using npm run start. And it should load our local server as so. Cool. Uh, right now, it's just a bare bones create React application, and we're going to do a little bit of plumbing and modifications to make the app a little bit easier to develop in. So opening up the Blockstacks tutorial um, source folder, I'm going to first increase the size of this so it's a little bit easier to see. And I'm going to be removing all of this code here and changing the CSS to SCSS. And this is possible because in our package.json, we've installed the, the node sass library. If you need more details on why this works, you can refer to the uh, create react app documentation and advanced configurations. But for now, we're going to keep this empty here. And in app.js, we're going to change this to app.scss. And if we go back to our current application, it's a little bit big and wonky, but it works. Now going back to our code here, um, we're going to be adding a style sheets folder. And this is kind of where we're going to keep all of our style sheets. And then in the style sheets folder, we're going to rename the app.scss app into main.scss. So I'm going to do like this main.scss. Get rid of this one. And then add another file called utility.scss. And I'm going to copy and paste this code below. I'm going to include this code in the description and I'll reference to the GitHub link as well if needed. But these class names will help kind of just make styling a little bit easier via class names. And then we can import the class names via main.scss here. So we go at import utility. Cool. 
and then in app.js, we're no longer going to be referencing to app.scss because it no longer exists and it's going to be style sheets and main.scss. Let's remove the logo as well since we don't really need that, uh, need that in our application and we're just going to make this a very bare bones hello block stack application. And here we could remove these, we could remove the test, we could remove the index.css, and I think that should be good. So it looks like we're erroring out and there might be some code in here that is referencing to index.css. Cool. So now it's just a very simple hello block stack application. I'm not too worried about this SCSS and styling at the moment, but since we're using React Bulma components, there are certain uh, plumbing that we have to do with this application. So I'm going to just copy and paste the code that I need to add below. And by adding this code, it gives me the option to use the React Bulma components as um, kind of similar to how you would use Bootstrap or Material UI components. So if I ever did import button from React Bulma components and then reference to this button here. This is a Bulma component button. If we look at that here. Cool. This is a React Bulma component. And there are other properties or props that you can add to this to give it some kind of flair or color to it. And I won't go into too much detail here. Ah. I apologize. You could add some color here and then you'll give it, you'll give the component a little bit of color, but I won't go into too much detail in terms of how React Bulma components work. And with the way it's currently set up, you don't have any customization, but that's kind of a secondary to what we really want to learn. And if you have any questions about Bulma and how it works, um, there's a couple of links that I attached in the slides. The first one is the official Bulma link documentation. And the second one is the GitHub and the React storybook. We could just take a quick gander at it. And if you have any questions about how the components are being used or what kind of props it's supposed to take, um, the storybook will give you a lot of information. Now that we've done the plumbing and connected all the libraries together in our create react application i think this is a good stopping point until we move on to talking about the user session um, the user session is really important because it's the main key ingredient in terms of retrieving data are you signed in um, logging in and logging out and i think it this in itself deserves a lesson of its own so I hope you guys are really excited into digging down into the Blockstack library as much as I am, and I'll see you then.